Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena Games video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck, and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at a deck nicknamed Collected Cleave, as it combines Collected Company with Amber Cleave. Collected Company, of course, the 4 mana instant from Amon Cat Remastered, letting us take a look at the top 6 cards of our library. We can put up to 2 creature cards with converted mana cost 3 or less from among them onto the battlefield, and the rest goes on the bottom. And taking a look at the numbers here, we've got a total of 30 creatures we can hit with Collected Company, which is typically the number you want to aim for whenever building a Collected Company deck. And then we've got two copies of Embercleave, the powerful legendary equipment with Flash, so we can play it at instant speed, and it costs one less to cast for each attacking creature we control, potentially reducing it all the way to just double red to play it. And then when Embercleave enters the battlefield, we can attach it to target creature we control right away, giving it plus one plus one, double strike, and trample, which combines especially nicely with some of our large green creatures, which can then hit for a ton of damage, and then later we can still move it around for 3 mana. So these are the powerful payoffs in the deck, and then the only other non-creature spell in the deck are two copies of Primal Might, a sorcery for X and a green, giving target creature we control plus X plus X until end of turn, and then it fights up to one target creature we don't control. So we can even play Primal Might just as a pump spell, even if the opponent doesn't have any creatures in play, but being able to take out some of the opponent's larger creatures that don't die to the 2 damage from Stomp is what makes Primal Might so attractive. And then taking a look at the rest of the deck, at 1 mana we've got the full playset of Lunar Elves, which can potentially speed things up, help us cast the Collected Company ahead of schedule, and it's still a 1-1 creature to help us attack with our Lovestruck Beast, so it's still useful later in the game. Then we also have the full playset of Pelt Collector, a 1-1 creature, but it's not going to stay a 1-1 for very long, as it will pick up a plus 1 plus 1 counter whenever a bigger creature enters the battlefield or dies on our side of the battlefield, and then it eventually also gains Trample. Then at 2 mana we've got the full playset of Paradise, Druid as an extra mana creature that has hexproof as long as it's untapped, can also help us ramp into a turn 3 collected company, and it's still a two-powered creature to help us grow Pelt Collector. And then we also have two copies of Scavenging Ooze, a 2 mana 2-2, two -two, that for a single green can exile a card from a graveyard, and if that card is a creature card, we get to put a plus one plus one counter on Scavenging Ooze and gain one life. So the Ooze gives us a bit of main deck graveyard hate and life gain, and is especially nice in the grindier matchups where lots of creatures end up dying, as we can eventually eat them all up with Ooze and end up with an enormous creature. Then at 3 mana we also have the full place of the Bone Crusher Giant, which we can also kind of count as a 2-drop, as we'll typically use the Adventure Stomp first, dealing 2 damage to any target, and it also says damage cannot be prevented, so that can also potentially come up when a creature has protection, or if the opponent casts a fog effect, and then afterwards we can still play a 4-3, which will also deal additional damage to the opponent if they try and kill it with a spot removal spell. Then we've got one more adventure creature with a Lovestruck Beast, we'll typically play the Heart's Desire Adventure first, making a 1-1 one, one, white human creature token, and then afterwards we can play the 3 mana 5-5 five, five that can't attack unless we control a 1-1 one, one creature, so that's also where Lenor Elves and sometimes Spelt Collector can come in handy to enable the beast. Then we also have the full play set of Gruul Spellbreaker, a 3-3 three, three with a Riot and Trample, so we can either let it enter the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter or with haste, and then as long as it's our turn, we and Gruul Spellbreaker have Hexproof, so we can't be targeted by a card like Settle the Wreckage, and the opponent can't use any spot removal on the Spellbreaker during our turn. And then another new addition from Amon Cat Remastered are the two copies of Aronas, the Indomitable, a 3 mana 5-5 five five legendary creature god with death touch and indestructible, but Aronas can't attack or block unless we control another creature with power 4 or greater, but there's no shortage of those in the deck between Spellbreaker, Giant, Beast, sometimes Spell Collector and Ooze can also get up to a 4-4, four four. and if that's still not enough, for twin a green, target creature gets plus 2 plus 0 and trample until end of turn, so Aronas can also enable itself. And then finally we've got two copies of a Rampaging Ferocidon, a 3 mana 3-3 three, three dinosaur with menace, saying players cannot gain life, and whenever another creature enters the battlefield, Rampaging Ferocidon deals 1 damage to that creature's controller. So this is just a good card by itself in any aggressive deck, but it shines especially against any life gain or token decks, and it also has a nice application against the goblin decks, where the opponents won't be able to make a ton of goblin tokens with their Krenko, otherwise they risk dying to the Ferocidon. And then the rest of the deck we've already covered, with four companies, two cleaves, 
and two copies of Primal Might. Primal Might also synergizes quite nicely with Ronos, since it's an indestructible Death Touch creature, so we can always play Primal Might for x equals zero to take out any opposing creature, and we can also use it to potentially turn one of our creatures into a four-powered creature, so Ronos can also attack. So these two cards have great synergy together. And then the mana base, only 22 lands, since we also have a lot of mana creatures and our curve isn't incredibly high, giving us 6 mountains, 6 forests, then 2 copies of Hashap Oasis as an extra mana sink that we can potentially use to pump up one of our creatures, and then 4 rootbound crag and 4 stomping ground. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with an acceptable hand. Facing a drowned catacomb. Hopefully no hand disruption spell here since we kind of need the Paradise Druid. It's gonna be a search for Ascanta, so an Asper control deck. Sweepers are definitely not what we want to see on the other side. So this could be a tough one. One's got three mana, picked up an extra pelt collector. Yeah, I don't want to overextend into a sweeper necessarily. What I could do is just play a lobster beast and then attack for four without going through the heart's desire since we still have an extra beast to make a 1-1 one -one to enable the one in play and a pelt collector. That way I get to attack for two more damage and if their plan is to sweep the board anyway, I don't miss out on the two damage. And then we still grow the Pelt Collector here. And of course if they counter this we can still potentially do something else. Opponent absorbs. Given that they absorbed... I think I'm okay playing an extra Pelt Collector. Because it makes it less likely that our opponent has a 4 mana Sweeper in hand. It's gonna be Remorse taking away one of our cards. Takes the Beast. Would not mind drawing a land so we can stomp and then play Giant. Or a Collected Company. I also don't hate just playing the Giant and then attacking with everyone. Including the Paradise Druids. Because we get to grow two Pelt Collectors. We also get to play around Sensor. And then company is a nice way to put some more creatures in play if they do end up drawing a sweeper. Although, of course, if the Paradise Druid dies, there's a chance we won't be able to play company. Erebos' intervention taking out the 1-1 one -one Pelt Collector, that's fine. Serpent's down to 12. Still doesn't feel like they have a sweeper in hand, otherwise they probably wouldn't have used that intervention. But an Oath of Kaya is a pretty good answer to Pelt Collector. Ooh, Embercleave. Sadly I'm one mana short of playing Embercleave here. So do I just main phase company in the hopes of hitting Gruul Spellbreaker with haste? I think so. Ronos seems great. And then Spellbreaker seems pretty good too, over Scavenging Ooze, although Ooze could prevent a Transformed Oscanta. So they're both pretty decent here, but I definitely want Ronas as a bit of sweeper insurance. So between Spellbreaker and Ronas, I think we can just kill them before Oscanta transforms. So I don't care too much about exiling their graveyard. Another Oath puts them back up to 11. Takes out Bonecrusher Giants. That is pretty effective here since I won't be able to attack with Ronos and play the Amber Cleave like I wanted to, but I can just pump Paradise Road here and attack with all. 
and it's still lethal. All right, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with uh, pretty decent looking hands. Turn two Paradise Root, turn three Company. And we're facing Gigantha, could be a burn deck or a sacrifice deck. At least they won't be able to burn my Paradise Roots before I can tap it for mana. Does look like Mono Reds. Think I'm into main facing the company in case we hit Gruel Spellbreaker, although I guess I'm pretty happy to make a 4 4 Spellbreaker instead of giving it hastes. So it dodges a 3 damage burn spell, so I guess we'll just go for End of Turn Company instead. And then that maybe sets up our Amber Cleave. Opponent hasn't cast a single spell yet, it's going to be a 3 mana Skewer. Don't see that very often. And we hit some pretty good ones. An Embarrassment of Riches. I mean, if I just go for Beasts plus Giants, next turn I can Heart's Desire and play Ember Cleave. Yeah, that seems good enough. Belt Collector also works. Sack with all, cleave on the beasts. And we have an extra 1 1 to make sure the beast can attack. And yeah, opponent explodes, so. The two namesake cards, Collected Company and Ember Cleave, to get a quick win against Moderat. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a bit of a slower draw. No Accelerants, Elves, or Paradise Druid would be nice. Facing Lurus, so if it's the Spirit Dancer deck, we do have Stomp to take out a turn 2 Spirit Dancer at least. Yeah, I guess we'll try it. If we're up against a Pyromancer deck and they have a bunch of Thought Seizes and we don't end up drawing lands, then this could be awkward. And they do seem to be on the Rakdos Arcanists slash Pyromancer deck. But luckily no turn to Arcanist. Mills a copy of Claim to Fame. Alright, drawing lands is good. Don't want to stomp Stitcher Supplier if I can help it. Plus he could also be holding a Village Rite, but they didn't play one end of turn. Now there's Arcanist, which doesn't die to my 2 damage. Supplier attacks. Yeah, I don't think I want to stomp Supplier just to have my opponent play a Village Rite and then fizzle my Bone Crusher. So I'll just untap. I also don't think I want to shock their face, because this could be pretty useful later at killing something like a young Pyromancer. And then we'll just play either Frostodon or Spellbreaker, which makes more sense. I guess a 4-4 Spellbreaker can block Arcanist even if they pump it. So this is an end of turn village rights sacking Stitcher Supplier. And they did find a Croxa. So that's potentially a problem. They have enough cards in Graveyard to escape. At least there's no Thought Seize for them to get back. And the Spellbreaker does do a reasonable job of blocking the Arcanist. I mean, our hand's definitely powerful. Double Company, Amber Cleave. Opponent's got the Call of the Death Dweller, getting back Croxa. Makes a Death Touch plus Menace Stitcher Supplier. We have to discard a card. Primal Might could be an answer to Croxa once they do actually escape it. Bone Crusher Giant could be an answer to Lurus or a Young Pyromancer. Probably Ferocidon. And then hope to draw lands next turn so we can chain together double company. Ooh, 
innocent blood. Pretty strong here. Luckily, no Thoughtseize in the graveyard yet. Just gonna shock our face. Alright, land is good. I think I'm just gonna pass so they can't flash back an innocent blood with Arcanist and kill one of our creatures. And I wouldn't be able to activate a Scavenging Ooze even if I found one. But Ooze would definitely be a great hit with company here. So our opponent's gonna escape Croxa. I'm not sure what I should discard here. Maybe it's the Bone Crusher Giant anyway. Because next turn I'm probably gonna cast Primal Might to kill Croxa, although they can just escape it again. I guess I'm hoping to just hit a Scavenging Ooze here. Yeah, let's get rid of the Giants. And we'll see if the Arcanist wants to attack or not. Ooh, claims Vessel. Makes an extra 5-5. Five, five. That's gonna be difficult to beat. No attacks. Really needed to hit something better here. So now what? I can Primal Might to take out the Demon. I could also go for Main Phase Company, hope to hit Scavenging Ooze. So we can at least exile some more cards from their graveyard. But it kind of feels like I'm hopelessly behind here. Yeah, I definitely need to play another Company. Probably need to keep Land in Hand to discard to Croxa. Still no ooze. Heronos isn't bad. And then I could Primal Might to take out either the Demon or Croxa. Just take out the Demon here. And then try and set up something with Embercleave. They still have a Lurus they can eventually put in their hand, which we don't have an answer to. And they put it in hand. Fame on Arcanist, so they can maybe flash back a 3 mana spell, like Call of the Death Dweller for Stitcher Supplier and Arcanist. Crocs attacks as well, discard Mountain. So is there any chance I can kill my opponent here with Embercleave? Let's say I attack with three creatures. I mean, we're getting close. Embercleave on Ronas does mean 11 unblocked damage. But I guess they've got two chum blockers, so even if I draw lands and can activate Ronas to give one of these two trample, that's still gonna be a little bit short of lethal. So I don't think I'm supposed to trade for Arcanist here with my Giants. So let's just block Croxa and then take three. Shock takes out my Elf. So now I have to be careful that I don't die to a hasty Croxa with Claim to Fame, giving it haste out of the graveyard. Maybe I just attack with two creatures here, and then if they block Supplier on Giants, I can cleave the Giants. And then we'll have a Bone Crusher to block a hasty Croxa. Sure. I mean, I have to do something here, I can't just sit back. 
Otherwise, we're going to lose to Lurus and Croxa in the long term. So our opponent's down to six. And hopefully I'm not dead here. They have at least one shock in the graveyard they can get back, and an innocent blood. Gives Arcanist plus two power to get back another expensive spell. Double pumps. Shock's face. Alright, I guess we're just dead here. Gets back another shock. Puts me to four, and Arcanist has Menace here, so I can block it. So yeah, GG's. Close game here against the Rakdos Pyromancer deck. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and our game plan is pretty straightforward. Turn two Paradise Root, turn three Company, turn four Company, and hope for the best. Facing a Sultai deck. Scavenging Ooze can definitely be useful at exiling Uro from the graveyard. Opponent passes. This might be a gross spiral. Don't really want a company in response. I don't expect my opponent to have many counter spells, and it could have sweepers like Extinction Event that they can play next turn thanks to the Gross Spiral. The cycles of Fetid Pools instead. Does that change my decision? Yeah, I guess now maybe I want to play around a counter spell and just main phase company. Hit double Pelt Collector and Elves. Don't really have a great use for the Elves. Ooh, Maelstrom Pulse. Well, that punishes me for getting double Pelt Collector. Now do I main phase company? I could hit a hasty Spellbreaker, I suppose. Sure. It's going to be Extinction Events, naming Odd, leaving us with just the Paradise Druid. So we're not in a great spot here, but at least we still have a bit of action left in hand. So for now, don't need to ooze just yet. We can maybe wait for an Uro to make an appearance. And then I guess we'll just Heart's Desire play the Beasts. Opponent passes with 4 mana up. I'm kind of into playing a Heart's Desire pre-combat in case their plan was to get rid of the 1-1 one, one token. Attack with all. Heartless Act on the Beast, sure. They might be sandbagging another 2 mana removal spell for the second beast, but I think I still play it. Mm -hmm. 
Could see something like Nissa here. It's gonna be Crisis for four instead. So good turn for Primal Mites. Points at 13. Can hit them down to one. I mean, that's gotta be good enough. And then I can finish them off with the uh, stomp. So Primal Might definitely showing its uses here. Extinction event, that's fine. They gotta kill the Spellbreaker now. Or maybe they have an Uro to gain three. But no, opponent just explodes. So yeah, even fighting through a decent amount of removal and sweepers here, we managed to come out on top and still had a Scavenging Ooze left in hand to eventually exile Uro and turn into a giant creature itself. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. Definitely not the most exciting hand ever. No one drops. No Collected Company. So it's possible that on the draw I'm supposed to mulligan this to look for something a bit more explosive. But it's also not a terrible hand. I'll try it. The fact that my opponent mulliganed I guess makes me more inclined to keep. Because our hand is functional. But if our opponent has kind of the nut draw then it could be too slow. Next turn we get to go Pelt Collector plus Frostodon. Interesting. Garrix Uprising, so maybe our opponent's on a mono green. Kinda similar deck to ours. They could also be playing Collected Company. Gonna be Goreclaw instead. Alright. So we've got some options. I don't hate just playing a second Frostodon. Opponent takes it. And then playing the elf is probably okay, I'll end up taking two from my own Ferocidons, but... We got our opponent on the back foot. Although an Elder Gargaroth... ...might change that in a hurry. At least they can gain the life of Gargaroth. But it's still a 6-6. Six, six. Nullhide Ferox. Also has Trample thanks to the Uprising. So that was a pretty powerful turn. I guess they won't be able to block both my Ferocidons. So just attacking with everyone here could be a solid strength. Let's see what happens. They do get to trigger Gargroth, but we get to take out Goreclaw. Yeah, the life gain's not gonna work with Frostodon in play, I'm afraid. And then I can put him to one here. So let's say our opponent made a beast instead. Then I guess they still would have died to the one damage from Frostodon. So drawing a card probably was their best bet. Yeah, that life gain still doesn't work. I'll take six.
And our opponent explodes, they can't play any additional creatures, and we can just attack with everyone to close out the game. So yeah, the Ferocidons definitely did a lot of work here. If the Gargaroth can gain them life, then we probably end up losing. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Just a solid curve of creatures here. Turn 1 Selfless Savior. Could be a Spirit Dancer deck, I guess, without Lurus, or could be maybe a Mono White Anger deck. I'll take one. No turn two play. And Ocatra's Monument, alright. Monument deck. So Frostodon's gonna be pretty useful against the Monument deck, is my guess. Tribunal to take care of Ferocidon. They decided to tap the Savior since they had another one. Makes sense. Ooh, company. Think I'm into main phasing the company in case we hit Spellbreaker, which I'm happy to give hastes. Well, <laughs> double spellbreaker it is. And then do I want to trade the ooze here? Yeah, I guess that's fine. Opponent takes it all down to two. And explodes. Well, that's the power of Collected Company. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a nice looking hand. Turn 1 Elf, a selection of 3 drops into hopefully turn 3 Company. Let's go with Ronos into hopefully a 4-4 Spellbreaker to enable Ronos next turn. If I don't draw land, and if I draw land, I'm pretty likely to find something to enable Ronos. With the Collected Company. Hopefully the Elf doesn't die. Opponent passes. Yeah, let's just main phase company here. Find beast plus spell collector seems good. They might have removal for the beast, but that's okay. So no attack with Ronas just yet. But next turn we can try again. Cry kills my elf. So I guess we'll just play Spellbreaker as a 4 4. And hope my opponent doesn't have extinction events. It's gonna be a gross spiral. And then. We'll just move to combats. Alright, that was a fast game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Turn 1 Heart's Desire, turn 2 Druid, hopefully turn 3 Company. If 
facing turn one islands in two. Just an opt. Blue black. Let's see if they have a response here. Uh, guess they could be playing like a blue black flash deck that has a 2 2, making flash spells cheaper. I'll just stay back with my 1 1. It's just a frantic inventory. Because if I lose a 1 1, the beast is not super useful anymore. Alright, I don't think my opponent's playing Spell Pierce. So I'm kind of into just main phasing the company now. Not the best hits if they have something that can wipe the board of all small creatures here. Interesting. Serpent's on the mill deck. Mills me for eight. So what's the plan here? Play beasts. Attack with the belt collectors and if they block I can still stomp and if not I'll just hearts desire again. Double scavenging ooze gone. Those would have been nice. So we're down to 31 cards. Yeah, if they have a whelming wave here, they could do some damage. I just want to grow the pelt collectors up to 4 fours. And then next turn I can make them into 5-5s. Five Let's see if they have Whelming Wave or some other sweeper. Yep, there it is. Alright, so I've got six mana. So double Pelt Collector plus Paradise Druids. Plus Hearts Desire plus Elves, and then next turn I can grow the Pelt Collectors a bunch. And there's Bruvac, alright. Ashok is going to mill for 8 here. Welcome to my this is my Down to 17 cards. Primal Mites. Let's see, are they dead? So we can take out Bruvac. And then attack with all except elf, so I can still stomp. They block here, take 5, 6. So I can't quite kill them. If they play another Bruvac and then use Ashok, mill me for 8, mill me for 8 again, I would die. So I guess I want to avoid that situation. Alright, we'll do this. And then I'll just take out a wall so Whelming Wave doesn't pick it back up. It's 
It's gonna be a Teferi's Tutelage. Alright, and that does it. So Collected Company has definitely found a home in a lot of different places, and Gruul Aggro is no different, definitely a great addition for the archetype. You do give up some powerful cards like Questing Beast, but in return you get a nice 2 for 1 usually with Company, that can also help you play around Sweeper Effects by playing it end of turn. And then there's also a lot of flexibility with additional cards you can play between the main deck and sideboard to tailor the deck to certain metagames. A card like Clothis can give you additional graveyard hate and is difficult to get rid of, so shines against some more controlling decks as well. You can play a card like Garrick's Harbinger, which shines against any deck playing black spot removal spells like the Sultime Midrange Ramp decks. So that's another great one to potentially consider. And at 2 mana there's also a ton of options if you do want to play Paradise Druid between the different Kanaras from Amon Cat Remastered, as well as Robber of the Rich or maybe Zurta Goblin if you care about the Devotion, maybe if you're playing Clothus in the main deck, that can be another consideration. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.